We're doing a makeover. If you haven't met me before, my name is Tamara and I do DIYs and other things, but I just film the DIYs. Today's DIY is one of the bigger ones because we are doing a room makeover. As you can see right now, this room is a little sad. It's very cramped, it's small, it's got white walls, but like a cool white. And I don't mean like, oh, it's so hip or whatever the kids say these days. It's just like really stark white that just doesn't look good with all this new ornate furniture I have that has a lot of hand detailing and it's in these primary colors like red and blue which can look a little childish so I really wanted to bring in another color that will give it that pop and make it look intentional and not like a schoolroom or something. So I painted this color from Sherwin-Williams called Antique and I painted on a piece of cardboard so that I can then, you know, move it, you know, move, move it around different parts of the room and see how it looks um, with the different pieces of furniture uh, and different lights, which I think is a really good option so that you're not painting swatches everywhere and little small bits. Just use a big bit on a piece of cardboard and move it. Okay, so what's the plan here? We're starting with this green background to make all of my ornate furniture pop. Then I'm going to go for a kind of cottage core look, but in terms of where this cottage is located, I, I don't know. I want to introduce this Scandinavian botanical print and maybe some more traditional stripes. Then we go into more of like an English countryside feel with some horse artwork and some other decorative touches. You know, I want a lot of patterns, but I still want some modern elements so that the whole design has balance and relevance. So, first things first, I have to make room for my dresser to fit inside the closet. That way I can have some more streamlined layout for the rest of the room. And that requires me to do some extensive decluttering. So like this apartment only has one closet, and it's almost like a Tetris game just to fit everything I own in here. But after removing some clothing and some other assorted junk, I was able to fit the dresser in place. The drawers won't open with the closet doors on, so we're going to deal with that later. Now it's time for me to remove my extensive llama collection and other sundries and prep for paint. Okay, so this is the situation. I don't want to move my bed out of here. There's just no room. So we're gonna move the bed around while we paint. This is called realistic makeover time. Let's take a look at the color. Ooh, she looks bright. Looks like she needs to be mixed quite well. Listen, I know what you're thinking when you look at this color, but if you hold your judgment to the end, I think you'll be pleased with how it turns out. So these are curtains that I bought on Etsy and they're, can you see this? They're block print and I liked this kind of style. And I had to hem up the back and some of these little tabs, but then I got a tension rod. We're gonna stick it inside here. So I don't have to see the mess that is my closet. Well, you can probably just see yourself. This is actually a mirror I got at a flea market. And what I really liked about it were these, um, these things, these little curly cues. I thought it gave, again, some sort of ornate detail that will complement the rest of the room. I also really like the price at 20 bucks, so let's put her up. Now you might be saying this is too low, but I actually want to be able to get a full length so when I stand at the other end of the room, this, this works for me. Yes, aesthetically, it's a bit low, and maybe I'll change that later, but I like it. 
So for my next project to make this makeover last forever, it seems, I decided that I want to continue this pattern on the curtain here up here just to make it look a lot more cohesive. And I think that's really important to have like this kind of pattern, different scales around the room, you know, large ones, small ones, you know, some the size of your head. To do that, I need to find a way to paint this on there. And I don't trust my eyeballs. They, they lie to me all the time. So instead we are gonna to go to some trusty tracing paper, which I found in my old art supplies. Perhaps I was a um, forger in my youth. In any case, we will use this to copy here, to carbon copy up here or something. And then I'll paint it on there. And what do you think? You think it's gonna be good? You're gonna like it? Yeah, can, can you please tell me? I can't read your mind either. I feel like this relationship needs to be reciprocal. So please, in the comments below, tell me if you think this is a good idea. If you chose what I chose, which was to do this, then you were correct and you should feel good about that. I paper clipped my tracing paper to some red carbon paper and then taped it in place. I took a mechanical pencil and retracted the lead so just the plastic could trace along the design and I wouldn't end up with a difficult to follow trace. Probably gonna need a second coat for sure. Now you might be wondering why I feel comfortable painting cabinets in an apartment rental. Well, these cabinets have been painted over multiple times. I'm talking their drips, they're not pretty. So I feel like when I leave, I'll just do another coat of paint and it will appear as if I hadn't done anything. But I'll keep you posted on whether or not this assumption proves correct. This simple design took three hours and three coats of paint. I chose these curtains because they added texture with the embroidery and they were within my budget. I have a second curtain rod behind that which will include some blackout curtains since sleep is the source of all good things in this world. Like seriously, I equate good sleep with the peak of happiness. So I picked this up from Target kind of near their entryway where they have kind of like cheaper stuff that maybe at one point was a dollar, but now is $3. And I got two of them and they're wood. And so I thought it'd be fun to make this into a little shelf that will act as my nightstand. And, you know, I can like, you know, stain parts of it. I can paint it in a cool way and it can hold things like um, a Kindle or, you know, some reading glasses, not a candle. I don't do candles. And, uh, what's that say? Compliant for her formaldehyde. How much formaldehyde is allowable? That's, uh, troubling. Let's not think about it. At first I'm like, oh yeah, this is obviously like a sun. And then I spoke to my sister and she's like, oh, it could be a peacock. And I was like, okay. So we're going with like a folk art kind of design, if you will. So I'm just gonna do some more details. And since it's folk art, it can be messy and it will be because I'm doing it. Not identical, I mean they're sisters. And I kind of like them looking at each other. So we will add the shelf to it and call it a nightstand. Okay, and she's finished. It works, she fits. In a late night hit of inspiration and honestly boredom, I decided to paint this lampshade with a stencil and some paint. I just want to bring in as much pattern as possible to add depth to this makeover.
You'll remember I have that long blank wall right where you enter. I want to make use of that space and I thought it might look nice with a long skinny shelf. Just two pieces of wood and some brackets left over from an Ikea project made short work of the process. I mounted it at 36 inches from the ground since that's the height that decorative molding is at and it gave room for some artwork above. So I'm trying to figure out what kind of artwork I want here. I want something that is a little bit modern since everything else is a little old world, if you will. And I went on eBay, like you do, and I found a set of three of these Marc Chagall windows and they're actually cross-stitched so that adds that sort of cottage core thing. And they got these little pops of red, which I thought were really great. Again, we're trying to integrate pops of red. They have this really cool arch and the frames are all uniform. So it's not as chaotic as some of the other things, but it adds more patterns. So let's put them up. Now I have all this space to decorate. So we're gonna start with something tall at one end. It's a, another horse element. And another tall element, just a candle holder. I think I like putting books here just so that it reminds me to read them. I'm probably like halfway through half of these, so it's just a good reminder. Hey, read that. Don't buy another book you don't need. And then we're going to use things at different levels, and this will cover up that bracket. There's a little lion critter, another book I need to be finishing. And you may recognize this dude from my kitchen makeover. You'll notice throughout my makeovers, I tend to move things around just to see where they fit because design is like that. You're just always trying to see, does this work? No, it needs something higher, needs something lower. So it's fun to play around with. And then a plant, fake one for now. And then I'm moving in this guy. Um, it holds a lot of stuff, so I need to keep it around. And I don't think it impedes the walkway all that much, so I'm happy with it but I will lay another little silk, whatever this is, <laughs> on there, maybe another tray and some glasses. So we have these two compartments. This one, I'm gonna put my Swan Glass collection, which I collected over the pandemic. And then up here is a collection of alpaca llamas and sheep, which I literally like bought one or two and then everyone heard that I liked these apparently and now I get them all the time. So this collection has gone a little bit out of control, but as long as it fits within the confines of this, I'm okay with it. This shelf should also be a warning to people to stop buying me freaking llamas and sheep. Only those that fit in this little shelf. That's it. So we're done. We're topped out. Horses are going to be a big theme you'll see throughout this entire room and my life. Horses, llama, 60s and 70s glass. Yeah. Tray. A little dollar horse. Another element of red and hoarseness. We're adding more patterns wherever I can. If you've seen any of my past videos, you might have picked up on the fact that I like horses. I was never one of those horse girls, you know, that rode them as a kid and had aspirations of dressage. I like horses because they look statuesque and cool. You know, I'd never want to burn one of them by sitting on them but I will pay homage to them in this room makeover. Do you remember what this room looked like before? These kind of stark walls with just random collections of stuff? Time for the reveal in three, two, one. enjoyed this mishmash of different cottage styles. To see another one that I did, check out this video on my desk nook makeover. 